All right, the first thing that any first century Jew seeing this happen or reading this story would have recognized is that the location and the context of Jesus' conversation matters. Because if you go back to the Old Testament, you'll notice something interesting. Whenever one of the major figures in the Old Testament would meet their future wife, guess where they would do it? At a well. See, in ancient Israel, if you wanted to meet a woman, you didn't go to a bar to get a drink, right? You'd go to the local well, because it was women's work to go and draw the water. And they would often gather around the wells and get the water and, you know, talk and have conversations. So if you wanted to meet somebody, you can go down to the well. In fact, look at each of these examples. For example, top page, Moses meets his future wife, Zipporah, at a well. This is what the book of Exodus says. Moses fled from Pharaoh, and he stayed in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well, just like Jesus. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and they drew water. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And if you remember the Ten Commandments, remember the old Charlton Heston film? This is where he shows some of his ninja moves, and he drives all these men away, right? He fights them, and, and of course the women fall in love with him. Now, when they came to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you've come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. And he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. So Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah. So Moses meets his future wife where? At a well. Now go fast forward to Abraham's servant in the book of Genesis chapter 24. We read these words. After Abraham sends the servant out to find a wife for Isaac, the servant prays, Let the maiden to whom I shall say, Pray, let your jar down that I may take a drink. And who shall say, Drink, and I'll water the, cam the camels. Let her be the one whom you've appointed for your servant Isaac. Now before he was done speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar upon her shoulder. The maiden was very fair to look upon, a virgin whom no man had known. Keep that in mind. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Pray, give me a little water to drink from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw for your camels also until they have done drinking. Which, if you think about it, would have been what? A lot of work, right? It's not easy. I mean, you ever carried water around? No, water is heavy. And the work of drawing water is a lot. So when Rebecca comes up and says, oh, I'll draw it for you and the camels, this is a woman who's sacrificial, right? I mean, she's going to go out of her way for this stranger. And Abraham's servant knows, ah, this is the future wife of Isaac. Right? So woman plus a well equals a wedding. Right? Finally, though, the most important example from the Old Testament of all has to do with Jacob himself. Remember, what well were they sitting at when Jesus met the Samaritan woman? It was Jacob's well. So let's go back to the story of Jacob and look at what happens here. Jacob meets his future wife, Rachel, where? At a well. So Jacob went on his journey and he came to the land of the people of the east. And as he looked, he saw a well in the field. And the stone on the well's mouth was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place upon the mouth of the well. And Jacob said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said, Is it well with him? And, he, and they said, Behold, it is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. And he said, Behold, it's still high day. In other words, it's noon, same time. It's midday. It's not time for the animals to be gathered together, right? And you think about it for a second. If you were going to draw water, would you do it in the heat of the day? No, you wait till the end when it's cool, right? So he's a little puzzled that she's coming out. So water the sheep and go pasture them. But they said to him, Well, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. In other words, the wells, which were very precious in the ancient Near East, would be covered with a stone. 
that would be too heavy to steal the water. And then when all the shepherds who owned it gathered together, they'd roll the stone away, and then they could get the water safely and then cover it back up again so that marauders and bandits wouldn't come and either fill the well, right, or take it, take the water. Now, while he was still speaking with them, behold, who comes along? The third future wife, Rachel, with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And of course, what happens at this point, Jacob goes on, he kisses Rachel, he goes back to her house, and he falls in love with her, right? And they eventually get married, right? So the next future bride is given. Okay, so um, stop there for a second. What does this show you? It shows you that in a Jewish context, in the Old Testament, over and over again, whenever you have a woman and a well, you end up with a, a wedding, right? And in particular, the most famous story of all was the story of Jacob and Rachel at the well. Think about it. If you were a Jew, Jacob was the man whose name was changed to Israel. So he was like your great, 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 great grandfather. So the story of Jacob meeting Rachel would be like, you know, a family story of how your grandmother met your grandfather or how your great grandmother met your grandfather. This would have been a very well-known story, right, that they would have loved to tell. In fact, in ancient Jewish traditions that developed over time, they actually embellished it a little. According to the rabbis, they added a few extra elements to the story. Listen to what this story was retold like in the Jewish tradition outside the Bible. This is from the rabbis. They say that when Jacob saw Rachel, Jacob drew near and with one of his arms rolled the stone from the mouth of the well. Whoa. Right? In other words, he sees this pretty young girl coming up, right? So what's he do? Excuse me, ma'am. All right, one arm. I don't need all those other shepherds. We'll just move the stone away, look, you know, and shows off his strength. And, of course, she's impressed, and they get married, right? And all of Israel comes into existence because of that encounter. In fact, the rabbis go on to say that when Jacob did that, the well began to flow. The waters came up before him. He watered the flock of Laban, and the well continued to flow for 20 years. In other words, it miraculously turned into a spring. And you know what they called springs in the Old Testament? Living water. All right. So can you start to see what's going on here? All right. All of what's happening with Jesus and the woman at the well are like echoes of the Old Testament, right? He meets the woman at a well. It's noon time, right? He promises to give miraculous living water. And she asks him, are you greater than Jacob? And what's the answer? Yes. Why? Because Jesus is revealing his identity as not just the Messiah, but as the bridegroom Messiah. He's acting like he's a bridegroom in search of a bride, right? But as we've already seen, is he an ordinary bridegroom? No. And so is she, this woman, an ordinary bride? No. Thank you.